So shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom. So pyramids. Are pyramids pyramids? You know, the whole connection of the Israelites or the Hebrews, as they are referred to later on, they'll be known more as the Israelites as they come out, according to the narrative that we have in the Bible, in the second book of Moshe, the second book of Moses, the Hebrew book that is known as the Sefer Shemot, the Sefer, 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 the Cipher of Shemot, Shem, Shem is named, Shemot, the names. So in the second book of Moshe, really beginning from the first book, Bereishit, Reishit is, Reishit is the principle or wisdom. You can see Shlomo, Solomon's, Mishle Shlomo, Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, just for the divine feminine, the divine feminine in the beginning. And it's I and I in this ministry of his majesty has brought this forward, the divine feminine. How in the divine feminine, the divine feminine principle known as Chokma, Chokma or Chakma, the Hebrew Sophia in the beginning, Be Reishith. Now, Be Reishith, Be in Reishith, in principle. Translated translates in the beginning. It's not Barashith, only in bad pointing for ones that really don't know biblical Hebrew, but in the biblical Hebrew is Be Reishith. In Reishith. And in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, Shlomo HaMelech ben Dawid, Solomon the king, King Solomon discloses to us that wisdom that he received of Adonai, Adonai, Cha, Rastafari. Yes, so we have a divine feminine in the beginning. Bir Reishith bara Elohim et HaShemaim et HaAret. In the beginning, he, the powers, created Elohim, the true good, the true God, the true Trinity is the Hebrew Trinity. So the triple male, the triple male, yes, I and I said the triple male, Ab, Bain, Ruach Kadosh, in wisdom. And furthermore, we have Proverbs chapter 8 that really reveals that divine feminine. Because many have asked, many of the sisters, the daughters, but even many of the more conscious, the more true God conscious brothers have asked concerning, well, what about the divine feminine? Because he said, let us make man. Elohim said, let us make man. Who was he speaking to? No doubt he was speaking to Chokma. He was speaking to the Hebrew Sophia, Chokma, Chokma, as she testifies in the Mishle Shlomo in the Proverbs of Solomon. Just getting a basic groundation getting to the bedrock of the truth. Right? This is how we teach here in the ministry of his divine majesty, the L-O-J, L-O-J, the line of Judah Society of his imperial majesty. So here, 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 I am Ras Yadinos Tefari, Ras Ayodonis Tefari, Brother Yadin right here, 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 addressing this question that has come to I and I ear. Is there pyramids or pyramids in the Bible? Is pyramids or pyramids in the Bible or pyramids mentioned in the Bible? Some interesting information out there, right? Got questions? I and I got answers. Ask Rastafari Rebbe. Ask Rastafari Rabbi. Yes, I, Rastafari. So here, 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 and just touching briefly on pyramids, right? Pyramid. All right, now, of course, if you go to the Metuneter, or what is called the Metuneter, you know, different names mentioned there. The key name, the Mer, the Mer, or Mer, mentioned right there, there, there. But we're speaking about the Hebrew Bible. Could people ask, well, what proof do we have of the Exodus? All right, now, a lot of things get lost. A lot of things get lost in translation. A lot of things get lost when ones and ones might not have proper and good reading comprehension even of the translation they are reading. So here we'd like to state for the record the point of reference and then go into it in a follow-up vlog right here, here, here. Right? So pyramids in the Bible. Yes, pyramids are mentioned in the Bible, but you have to read it from the HD, from the Hebrew definition from the Hebrew perspective, right? Pyramids. Now, this actually takes us really to the first book, to Bereshith, right? As we get into Bereshith, we find about the Tower of Babel, the tower, 
was the tower, that which is called the Tower of Babel. Babel, Babel was the Tower of Babel, actually a type of a pyramid. Now, you've seen many different so-called artistic, I call them more like um, intellectually autistic. I have nothing against those who might have what they call autism, but we're talking about intellectually. Just like we call certain men and people beasts, right? That means they are lower than the so-called real natural beast, right? The natural beasts don't have the, the triple brain, right? But we have this triple brain, right? That means that we have to think and we should think logically, right? And come and let us reason and not be insane, right? So those who don't use what they have been given, right? When we call ones and ones beasts, right? So man has a triple brain. So this means that we don't have to just move on instinct. Man has a triple brain, right? A triple brain, right? The triple brain, the Trinity brain, because man was made in the image and after the likeness of the Hebrew Trinity, ha shalush ha kadosh, right? And as Gurmawi Nagus and Neges, His Imperial Majesty, Gurmawi Hara Salase, Baruchu, Blessed be he, Hakadosh, Baruchu Baruch Hashem, says to I and I, the called, chosen, and faithful Rastafari, right? That don't make up things in Rastafari name, but go according to the teaching of his majesty. He says, although there's nothing that's not written in your word, in the word. So we're looking at the word. So to connect the pyramid and pyramids in the Bible, in the Hebrew scriptures, we first of all have to go to the beginning, right? The first book of Moshe, the first book of Moses. And that first book is known as, in English, as Genesis. Some say, well, it could mean the genealogy of Isis. Okay, yeah, we get that. I guess if you're only coming from a, a, a English, a, a half original, perspective from a half original perspective that may seem to be true and perhaps you can discern certain things as one of I and I early Rastafari one of the elders the teacher said to pick sense out of nonsense so Genesis the genealogy of Isis okay we have been there but now in growing in grace and the knowledge of Adonai I and I sovereign Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach we have to study to shew ourselves approved so we begin with the beginning, right? To connect the pyramid in the Bible. So this is going to be in a few different segments or episodes or installments right here, 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 just to identify pyramid, right, in the Bible. Now, the first settlers in Mizraim, from the Hebrew perspective, is referred to as Mizraim, right, or Mitzraim. What is Mitzraim, right? Mitzraim, the Mitzahs, the Mitzahs. Mitzah can be a kind of a, a fortress, a grid, and closed structure. Remember, there was Upper Egypt, was called Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. So Mitzrayim, the Hebrew Mizraim, with that im at the end, makes it plural. There was the Upper Egypt, the Upper Grid, so to speak, the enclosure or structure, and there was Lower Egypt. So the first settlers in the Nile Valley, as it were, according to the scripture, according to the narrative in the Hebrew Bible, migrated from the area known as Shinar. Shinar, right? This is the original Shinar, right? Not to be confused with the later Shin, Shin, Shino, or the Sino. That's speaking about China. So now I'm talking about China here. That's the later reference to the root of what we have in Shinar. But here we're speaking about the earlier, the first Shinar. Right, a place called Shinar. This is near and was near the Euphrates River. Right, that was the location of an attempt by the children, according to the scripts of Noah. Noch, Noch. Did you know that in Noah's name, at the root of it is a reference, even Ethiopically, to Ankh, Ankh, to the Ankh, Ankh. Right, Noah, Anach, Anach. I'll bring that out as well, just putting this on the beamer, right? So we can see the importance, right, in our studies, right, of this Hebrew scripture, right, with other relevant sources, namely Egypt, namely ancient Egypt, 
right? But coming from an Ethiopic perspective, as the headwaters of the Nile, right? The headwaters of the Nile is a source, right, of the Kemet, of the Kamta, the Kamta, the Kamta that 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 reddish brown is so rich in nutrients with the inundation that comes from Ethiopia or Tobia, Tawabia, Tawabia, Tawabia. Right? Have to touch on the name as well. Because some say that Ethiopia is originally from Greek. Well, Rastafari Rabbi I and I, Yadin, right, have found that to be a lie. That's a lie. That's not the original name. It's from Tawab, Tob, Tawab, which means good. And there's a place called Good Land, that good land. So that's the source right there of the Kemet, that reddish brown farming um, agricultural ground that later on is an indigenous Egyptian, right, or Mitzramite reference to the land and also to the people called Kemet. Right, so Kemet is the ground, they say the black land. Actually, it's not literally black, but it's so deeply reddish brown. Right, so deeply reddish brown that it appears to be black. But those, those, that soil comes from Tobia, Tawabia, known as today as Ethiopia. Right, that's where it comes, the headwaters of the Nile in that region with Kenya, Kenya, Wakanda, Wakanda or Uganda. That particular source right there. See, I'm pointing these things out because it's important for us to get a perspective of what we're speaking about, right? Because the pyramids, right, as we call them today, did not just come about in a so-called vacuum, right? There's a connectivity. So when we're looking at the Hebrew Bible from the, the, the true blue, right, the true blue from the, from the true perspective, we got to put this into perspective as well. Right? Because the scripture from a Hebrew study of it, right? from the Hebrew study of the Bible and also studying science, you know, sci there's a science of the scripture. The Hebrew scripture has science in it, but a lot of it gets lost in translation, right? Gets lost in translation and in some cases in mistranslation, right? And a lot of Western Gentile, right, calcified pineal gland, um, misinterpretations of counterfeit Christianity, right? And and counterfeit trinities. We're speaking about the true trinity, right? The Hebrew trinity. Yes, the idea of the trinity of the true trinity is in the scripture as well. Just to point that out right there, just put down the beamer. So first we get the flood of Noah, Noah's flood, right? The connection with the sons and descendants, and also we're going to bring forward the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. Ones want to get a copy of that, you got the PDF, but get a hard copy at lojs.org. Check out lojs.org, Lion of Judah Society.org. We have that manuscript, the Ethiopic of it, because it's important for us to recognize that the Metzhafe Kufale is some of the ancient documents Right, that the early church, the, the later day, we say the Yehudi, the Jews from the first century time, the New Testament time, the black Jews in Judea, they had access to these documents. And the early Christian, the true church, right, that was, we say the black church, the real church, that was Yehudi, that were Jews, right, also had access to these documents. So many of the basic uh, theological ideas and concepts that we have in the New Testament, the bridge, between Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament, and Matteo and Matthew, the apocryphal books, as well as the um, books of like Enoch, Hanok, Enoch, Metzafe Hanok, and Metzafe Kufale. All right, so there's a lot of questions that we hear ones and ones often reasoning and discussing the Bible that they have. And sadly, that they don't understand how these other documents, many of them that were recovered to, we could say, the Western Gentile world through the Israelites of Ethiopia, right? And through the true Ethiopian Christians or the Ethiopians followers of the black Messiah, Yeshua, right? So many of these documents. Later on, they found these um, Dead Sea Scrolls, the Quran and the Dead Sea Scrolls, which just verify the Ethiopian testimony and account. Right, but these are important documents, right, in putting together the full picture to get a we call it the HD, 
right? You know, that higher, you know, definition, as well as the Hebrew definition and the higher dimension of the reality of the word. So that when we're looking at the scripture, looking at the Bible and seeking to understand the Bible, we can see how the science of the Bible verifies, confirms, right? So-called real world science or science. And when I say science, science, sciente, the word means knowledge, right? It means knowledge, right? What can be known and proven by way of knowing. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So when the first settlers in Mizraim migrated from the area known as Shinar near the Euphrates River, there were some attempts with, you know, at the Euphrates River and Shinar, what to call Babal. Babal, my Babal. Babal is confusion, but the first name from the Hebrew was Bab El. Bab El. Bab is door of El, of El, of the Almighty, the door of the Almighty. But after the confusion that Hashem brought upon them, it became known as Babal. See, this is the nuance here in the Hebrew. So those who have Lashan Kadash, we call it like baby Hebrew, right? And try and get into, you know, mature knowledges and areas. So that baby Hebrew, where they, some of the Hebrews say there's only one vowel. That's not so. Because otherwise you'll see the word Babal, right? Beit, Beit, Lamet. And you'll read it as Babal, and that's confusion. But then there's the first meaning of it, which can be Bob El, Bob El. So the pointing, there are seven vowels in true and real and biblical Hebrew facts. All right. So there was an attempt to construct what is called in the English translations, the tower. It's called the Tower of Babel. That's how they say it, right? Babel, right? The Tower of Bob El. Bob El, Bob El, the tower, a door to El, a door to the Almighty, a door to the power, right? The El, the Hayel, the El, right? Now, what was this tower? See, the tower of Bob El itself, some say it was maybe a ziggurat. They said it was a ziggurat, right? And what was a ziggurat? A ziggurat is pyramidal. My right, pyramidal in shape, right? And it's said to have been made of baked bricks, baked bricks. Because notice even in, in Genesis chapter 11, it says that they basically didn't have stone. They didn't have stone. This is the key indication here when we recognize who is the writer of the original, we can say the original text, the original code that comes down to us today in Genesis or Bereshi. It was Moshe, right? It was Moshe, Moses, who was learned in all the wisdom. What does the scripture says? He was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. The Egypts, plural, Egypts. Talking about the Mizraim, Mitzraim, Mitzraim, the two Mitzahs, right? The upper and the lower grid, upper and lower Egypt, right? So the scripture says that they sought to make this. But they had to use, let's bring forth the Bible right here, here, here. All right, we have a reference I would like to show right here. Like we said, we're going to do this in some parts right here. Right, touch on this in some parts right here. Just laying a groundation. This will be like part one. Right, hopefully this, this will be part one. Right, the opening part. Right, the opening part right here to lay a basic point of reference, a prospectus, and a groundation. So here in Genesis chapter 11... Right in chapter 11, it says right here, we're going to zoom forward to verse three. It says, and they said one to another. Now, who's the they? They, according to the Ethiopic book of Jubilees, they were the children of Noah, of Noah, the Ankh man, the Ankh man, Noah, right? Noah, right? The man of, we say of life. Because him and his seed that live, the Ankh man, Noah. Ever wonder why boats, according to the ancient Egyptian, we could say theology, boats are very, very important. It is said that Re, Re, who some mispronounce and call Ra, right, that Re, he moved in a, or the sun, to say the sun, right, the Shemesh, moved in a, a bark or a boat across the sky. Notice that right there. Why is the boat so significant? The cover and the guess. Right? The glory of the kings brings out the basic 
principles right there of that. But the boat, right? And they said one to another. So the children, right, of the children. So who were these children? Were they just um, 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 Hamites? Were they just um, um, Japhetites? Were they just um, um, Shemites? They were the children. So we're talking about the whole family. This is a family affair. Yeah, a family affair. That's what it says, and the whole earth was of one language. In the Hebrew, it says of one mother tongue. And the Hebrew brings out one mother tongue and of one set of words or one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. So notice, as they journeyed from the east, not to the east, but from the east. We're going to build on these basic points right there, but we emphasize that right there. Right? They journeyed from, so as they were journeying from the east, then they came across the plain. So it wasn't that they started out as Shinar, but they journeyed from the east and reached the place called Shinar. And they, notice it says they dwelt there after it gives us chapter 10, where it speaks of all the different families, the descendants, giving an overview of them, where, what they would be later on. But here we have Noah's children. So my Noah's children, so the children of, of Shem, Ham, Kam, and Yafet, and Japheth. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. To do what? Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And then the script says, and they had brick for stone. So they had brick instead of stone. Now, what, what were the pyramid made of? What was the pyramid made of? It was made of um, stone, right? And slime they had for mortar. You know what mortar is? So they used some sort of slime. We'll get into the Hebrew words, break it down, and build on the Hebrew science. But according to the translation here, KJV, Genesis chapter 11, verse 3, and slime they had for mortar, and they, notice it says they said, they said. It doesn't say just the, the Kamites. It don't say just the Shemites. It don't say the Japhetites. It says all of the children. This is when the children, the family was still united because they had one mother tongue. Because they all had one mother, right? One mother tongue, right? And one set of words, the Barim. Verse 4. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower that means that before the deluge of the flood there were cities and towers in fact there were cities and towers right before the flood right and that's when we get into the guy and the cain lineage and no and not right but first let's just lay the basic foundation here so they said let us let us build a city and a tower whose top to shemaima to shemaima to shemaim to heaven the may reach is italicized. Just check, check. Those, what's italicized in the KJB Bible is not often found in the Hebrew. And let us make us a name. So they wanted to make a what? A Shem. A Shem. The importance of name. They wanted to make for themselves a Shem. A name. Lest we, lest we be scattered abroad. So there was already a premonition that we may be scattered abroad. All right, let's keep it together, y'all. Otherwise, we're going to be divided, scattered abroad. And by building this city and building this tower and making for us and making for ourselves a name, we can prevent, right? They thought they could prevent the eventual fate, right? Somehow they just knew. You know, like sometimes you, you, you fear something and, and it's like Job, Eob said, the thing he feared is what came upon him, right? They said, lest we be scattered abroad, up on upon the face of the whole earth all right now moving forward this is the opening chapter right here 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 the failure of man of humanity under the noah the noah right the noahic covenant right now let's just review right here what did they say to one another to build a city and a tower a city and a tower. What is the difference between the urban and the pagan or the pagan? The urban and the pagan. What's the difference between the urban, the urban, when you say urban, urban is another word for saying like city, 
city dwellers. If you dwell in the city, you're urban. And if you dwell in the country, you're pagan. This has nothing to do with your particular type of worship. Get out of that Western Gentile, that calcified pineal gland, pineal mind. Right, urban and pagan. A lot of confusion. The word pagan doesn't even appear in the KJV Bible. So how do they insert that instead of the word for heathen or for nations? For nations. That's a whole other point, but just to point that out right here, because they said, let us build an urban center. Mm. And a tower. So this tower or this pyramid. So even the so-called ziggurat is a pyramid is a pyramid now what's the hebrew for this let's bring this up right here 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 gonna pause on this first part just now but not before we touch on this right here 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 let's go to my sword my sword my sword here's the first brothers and sisters sisters and brothers all right let's bring up the go down to the tanakh right here so here we go right here here we go right here all right right there reading from right to left Wayomru. Haba, haba, nagila. No, they said, haba, come, come, come. Wayomru, haba, nibne, lanu, ir, u amigdal, u migdal, we rosho, ba shemayi, we na ise, lanu, shame, pen, naf. Na foot, na foot, al pene call ha aret. All right, so that's just bringing out the Hebrew right there, there, there. Now you see the H4026. Let's scroll here to the KJV, right? Look at the word next to tower and a tower. H4026. Mm. Boom, there it is. Boom, there it is. What is, what is it? It's the word migdal. Now there's two forms of it. We can say like the uh, like a masculine form, right? Some might say the feminine form, the migdala, the migdal. Now it's interesting. We have Mary, right, in the new covenant, the Berit Chadasha, Mary Magdalene, Magdala, Magdala, right? Tower, Magdalene, Magdalena, Magdala. So there's two forms of it, migdal, more of a masculine form, and then we have migdala. More of a feminine form. You see the BDB brings out a tower, elevated stage, a pulpit, or a raised bed. Right? Let's get down to the strong concordance. From the H1431. Check. Take note. Talmudim. Dekamazamorit. Fellow disciples. Take note. Take note. Right? We're here in the H4026. So the word for tower, according to the translator, the KJV, is tower but i submit to you that this is the original pyramid the original mir right the original mir right the original pyramid is the migdal so here we have the earliest form of the pyramid right in the bible and it's defined right here by the hebrew term According to the HD, the Hebrew definition and the Hebrew scientia, scientia, science and knowledge as migdal, migdal, a tower from its size or height by analogy, right? By analogy, right? By analogy or like we say allegory, so to speak, figuratively a rostrum, right? Figuratively a pyramidal, you see, boom, boom, there it is, pyramidal. What do we say the ziggurat? What the, some say that no, the pyramid, I mean the, the Tower of Babel, it was a ziggurat. Well, what is a ziggurat? Accent. What's a ziggurat? It's a pyramidal in shape. It's a pyramid in shape. And it was made of baked bricks, pitched, right? Mortared with pitch, or what's called slime, pitch. Right? Now, given the engineering experience, it's easy to see how these settlers would, you know begin building smaller pyramids and we see the same thing being repeated in the Nile Valley right of mud bricks and straw called mastabas mastabas right mastabas beneath which the early rulers 
Sutin Net, Sutin Bet, Sutin Bat, right? The Perao, the great houses, those are the Perao, Ferao, Ferraon of the great on, the great houses where they were buried. So we see pyramid right here, 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 in what is often referred to as Tower of Babel. So is the pyramid in the Bible? Right? Was it the Tower of Babel or the pyramid? The pyramid of Babal. So here you see it for yourself right here in the Strong's definition for the H4026. All right. Now they say bed of bed of flowers, bed of flowers, because in some sense it could be used in that sense, in a figurative. Remember, it says figurative in a figure of speech. Not really that, but using this to say that, like a castle, a flower, pulpit, tower. Right. And they say compare the following names. Now let's go to the root. To the root. So migdal, migdal is from the Hebrew. Right. The Yehudit, the Yehudit gadal. What is gadal? Gadal. Gadal means to grow or become great or important, right? To grow, to grow. The root word, right? Some say it probably means to twist, and then they go to this right here, the gadil, 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 right? Twisted threads. You see how twisted threads? You see how columns, you see how they build one level and the next level and building up a pyramid, right? Just getting to the root right there. But getting to this right here, right? Migdal means big. Big, great, big, great. But it's also bringing out the sense of the pyramidal, as we just showed you right here, the pyramidal, right? So boom, right there, there, there. So this is our first entry into this, and there's some more to share as we move forward, 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 right? So here, the earliest form, right, mentioned directly in the scripture in the Hebrew Bible of what's called the pyramid, Right, is in the pyramid, right, or the migdal of Babal. The migdal. Remember what they said, let us build a city. A city. Now, notice even in ancient Mitzrayim, in Mizraim, that their pyramids were connected with cities. It was like the center of a city, right, to give them a promise, a name, a name, when it says, so that we will have a name. The name is that reputation, right, when it says men of renown. Right in Genesis chapter six, they were the men of the ancient like mythologies, like the Greek and the other old mythologies, the heroes and so forth and so on. But to give them renown, you know, if somebody has a name, right, they have that name recognition. By us building a city, they said, right, and building a pyramid, right. Since it's called Migdal, it's from Gadal, Gadal, big up, big up, right. You know, this would be as a structure <laughs> where ones and ones would see and recognize who we be, right? Who we be, right? So even after us, people will remember us. And notice how they built three. Remember we told you about in the beginning about the Hebrew Trinity is the true Trinity, right? The Hebrew Elohim is the true Trinity. And the other trinities are pseudo-trinities, right? Like the other so-called gods are pseudo-gods, right? Remember what even the God, Yahweh, even what he said, before him, there was no other. And after him, there is none. So even the ones who claim to be are not really what they claim to be, but they only be because they tried to big up and be like he who be who he be. Praise be the Almighty, His divine majesty. So, a little bit more on this. We'll leave this on the screen for a moment. Because First Maccabees show how the Israelites, the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, how they built pyramids outside of Mizraim, of Mitzrayim, a.k.a. Kemet. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Check the description. Also, check us out on the podcast. About to write up on the podcast right now. The Rastafari Podcast. Yes, I. Rastafari.